What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Camera Conversations episode. In this episode, I've got Nate and Bobby back, and we're talking about GH5 lenses for video, specifically GH5 native micro four thirds lenses versus adapted lenses with like speed boosters and other adapters. So we talk about things like autofocus, stabilization, and using different lenses in different shooting situations. Now, Nate and Bobby really know their stuff, so make sure you stick around and watch the whole video, and make sure you check out their information down in the description. And as always, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss future camera conversation videos. So let's get into our conversation about GH5 lenses for video. Nate and Bobby, welcome. We're back. It's great to be together again. <laughs> yes. you know, for those watching, you should go check out our video about a possible GH6 and what we'd like to see in that camera. Should be popping up right above Bobby if I have it framed up right. That video should be popping up right there. Oh yeah, there you go. There's the point. Love it. All right. Somewhere. This video, this video isn't about a possible GH6 though. This one's about lenses for the GH5 specifically for video. Now, what I like about having you guys on for this conversation is that Bobby, you're pretty much exclusively adapted lenses. Yes, sir. On the GH5. Yeah. And Nate, you have both, but a majority of your lens lineup is native to the micro wow. four thirds mount. So I think this is yeah. going to be a good conversation. We'll jump into that here in a sec. I'm just going to have you guys give a little brief intro. Why should we listen to you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going first? Nate, you go time? first. Me go first? Okay. Uh, yeah. My name is Nate. I'm an audio engineer, corporate video shooter, and I don't know why you should listen to me. I suppose I, <laughs> I've, done my <laughs> I've done some time in, in the industry. Uh, probably been around in audio longer than video that's for sure but yeah really yeah. i i study things pretty deeply so i've thought a lot about these lenses and it's gonna be fun to talk about them thanks for having me on yeah Caleb. yeah absolutely good to have you bobby yeah you probably shouldn't listen to me <laughs> no i'll just play it uh thanks for having me on caleb yeah i'm a seven-year videographer i've been running with the panasonic for two years going on two years now um and yeah it's up to you i don't i don't know what to say to that <laughs> hey man it's all good it's good to have you guys i'm pumped to be talking about gh5 lenses because it's so diverse with the gh5 and what you can do with it and with the micro four thirds mount so Let's start with this, okay? Let's start with this. What are we even talking about right now? So can you guys kind of explain like what a native lens is and what maybe an adapted lens is? You guys can jump into it. Sure. Nate, how about let's start with you? Well, I mean, I, I don't know if I would consider native to be, there's like MFT mount native, yep. like something that's Lumix or Leica or, or Olympus even really. They're all very compatible yeah. with the camera. Then I think you have micro four thirds lenses that are more cinema style. And then you right can on. have adapters, something you can have like a straight adapter that would go right to the lens. But typically people are using things like a Viltrox or Metabones mm -hmm. and it's what we call a focal reducer. So one, you get more depth of field uh, or a more shallow depth of field, but also you get a, a wider, a wider lens basically out of it. So, you know, for me, I have an adapter that adapts, EF lenses to micro four thirds. Okay. I think a lot of people are doing that. Maybe some people doing Nikon lenses as well that way, but mm -hmm. there's um, a few. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, really it all comes down to micro four thirds where, where it meets at the body, but yeah, you kind of have three different flavors that you can choose from to get there. Yeah. Great explanation. Bobby, anything you want to add to that? Uh, no. I mean, he said that so smooth <laughs> that like, Oh, that was that was so good, Nate. It good was job. like butter. Butter. It was like, like butter. It was like cinematic bokeh or bokeh. Mm. Yeah, verbal bokeh. <laughs> bokeh. Yeah. There, I love that verbal bokeh. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, so when we're adapting and using native lenses for um, the GH5, Bobby, you have, like, we have some talking points here. We may or may not get to all of them. But yeah, Absolutely. But you kind of mentioned some pros and cons of some of these. Can you kind of go into some of those things that you're thinking about, some of those pros and cons about yeah. using maybe not native lenses? And then we can kind of talk about native micro four thirds. Yeah, definitely. So the the pros that I have um, are definitely the speed boosters. Um, 
you get a little bit less. I mean, the the two times crop factor is is still there, um, but you get a little bit less of a crop factor, and then you get an extra stop of light with um, the different mounted lenses. Um, as far as the Speed Booster Pros are, um, you get more of a variety of lenses, uh, and then like for me, I. I use EF mount lenses. So, I mean, that's mm -hmm. Canon, that's Sigma, that's Tamron. Plus, all the, if I really wanted to, go back to all the micro four-thirds lenses. So, those are mm -hmm. definitely the pros. Um, what I would say for the cons is you're not using native glass. So, you lose out on some um, features. Like, uh, I mean... The GH5 is not known for the autofocus, but having mm -hmm. an adapted lens is even less of an autofocus, but I don't use much of autofocus. Um, and then the cost as well, sp sp I can't speak, the cost of the <laughs> speed booster um, and adapter. Some are cheap, you know, like you can get a regular adapter, you know, for like 40 to, you know, on up. Or if you go with a speed booster, they start at 149 to 640, 649 or around there. Um, and so, I mean, my big question is, does the cost outweigh the cons? And for me, I would say, uh, you know, the cost does. And so. Right on. Now, um, to go into that, let's talk about like the autofocus just a little bit. I know, Nate, mm -hmm. you kind of have some thoughts on that autofocus performance, yeah. you know, with, with the speed, with a speed booster or an adapter, you know, compared to some of those native micro four thirds lenses, what what are some of your thoughts on that? Sure. So, you know, GH five users, I don't think we're no one's using continuous autofocus. Mm. I can't imagine if you oh, are, man. if you are, you're accepting failure with it, <laughs> which is maybe it's okay. Well like said. if you're vlogging, maybe you're you're okay yeah, with that. But totally. So I say, as GH five shooters, we're kind of used to that, just like one hit autofocus, yeah. lock onto it type deal. Yeah, I would say that. when you're getting anything that's native, as in like a Lumix or a Leica or an Olympus mm -hmm. piece of glass that has autofocus to it, that's it's pretty good. Like I would say it always hits and it's instant too. It is so fast to focus. Yeah. I would say though that whether you're on Viltrox or Metabones adapted lenses, you just can't trust it. It gets like, it like brings it to the point of focus and then it just pulls it right off of it just a little bit. So, yeah. I think you kind of, you know, you're, it, the camera is not really known for doing anything autofocus related, but when it comes to that one hit feature, that's actually pretty handy still. One, mainly because you can do it when you're rolling. I use that pretty often. Like the camera's rolling and I don't want to cut the clip. I need to keep going yep. with it, you know, because you don't want to lose your audio because you might have like B-roll clips you can pair with it. So if you're doing really run and gun style stuff, I feel like the native Lumix type lenses really kind of help with that just because you can, you can still count on that autofocus to hit. Yeah. And, that, you, and you're, you're talking ahead, about Bobby. the, the tap to focus, right? Yeah. Like the, 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 yeah. the button on the back, that lock button that yep. we were kind of talking about focus in the lock. video. Yep. Now I will say like, I, one of my favorite lenses is the Sigma 18 to 35 F 1.8. Mm -hmm. Bobby, I know you use that. I just yep. think it's a, I think it's a great lens. I'm actually using it on, my GH5 right now for this video. Me too. Um, <laughs> but, but I don't use, first of all, I don't use autofocus with it, you know, being with the speed booster. And I don't use that focus lock either. I only use the focus lock when I'm on a native lens, like, you know, for example, the Lumix 12 to 35, 2.8. To because I just find that it doesn't, it doesn't hit. Now, I wonder why, like, why is that happening with the, with the adapter? I mean, all the electronics are in it, right? With that, with those speed boosters, like what's happening? Mm -hmm. Is there some kind of like disconnect? Do you guys have any thoughts on that? No idea. I feel like in the last video <laughs> we did, I, I basically said, I, I don't know why it does these things, but it's oh, so yeah. strange because it gets it like, it gets it there. And then, like I said, it kind of just like pulls it off of it a little bit. So yeah. It's, it's super frustrating. So here's a question actually. Yep. When you're doing these talking head things, like I, I imagine you're doing pretty often, are you using that yep. lens and how are you getting away with, like right now I'm using the Leica 25 mil, it's, it's an yep. MFT mount lens. And this is kind of like the one native lens I have that actually has some depth to it, right? Yeah. 
and I was it's actually, actually have my I, eye on that lens. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I I got a really good deal on it in a bundle. I'll have to tell tell you about it sometime. But yeah, right. How on. are how are you setting focus? Are you just like kind of logger style, so close to it that you can actually reach out and set your focus? Yeah. So like I'm in on the camera right now. I can reach it, so I can set my focus just sure. by reaching it. I'm at I'm at 18 right now. Um, What's your lens if you try to like? get a tighter focal length on there though yeah if i want to go like you know the 25 which would be you know 50. fairly close to that 50 millimeter um a lot of times i will need to like set something up where i'm sitting and so focus in eye. on that and then yeah. and then and then i'll then i'm you know focused in so Got it. it's that, kind of it kind of varies but right now i have it set at 18 and i can reach it oh totally yeah because that's a that's like 24 mil at least I hope yeah. I'm in focus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like f for me, like my camera is, you know, obeying the, the quarantine laws and it's six feet away from me. <laughs> yeah. Right on. <laughs> yeah, and so I do, I do the same thing. Like I focus and then I don't know. Uh, I know like some of the Canon lenses, you can actually see the, the feet or whatever. Oh yeah. And so you kind yeah. of, and that's how I was taught. Cause I use a Panasonic actual camcorder way back um, when I first started shooting. And I was taught that you focus by, um, by how many feet you just estimate the yeah. feet away. Sure. And so I've done that before too um, with, um, I think it's my Canon lens or my other Sigma lens that it shows the, like the, the feet and stuff like that so. sure yeah cool yeah that's a good idea all right now let's go into a couple other things here there's a couple other talking points i kind of want to hit on now one of the things that i think comes up a lot with you know uh native lenses versus adapted lenses is just the overall weight and size of them so yeah. and so many so many times like you see you see the 24 to 70. Um, both of you guys have like a Canon version of the 24 to 70. And those lenses, I have a Tamron version. Those lenses are just huge, you know, like huge thread on them, like 80, 82 or something thread on them. And they're heavy and they're just massive lenses. But then you come to like a native Micro Four Thirds equivalent of that which would be like a 12 to 35 mm -hmm. like the thing is tiny i should have my oh i have it on this camera back here you might not be able to see it but yeah i have it on the camera back there and it's like it's tiny so weight and oh yeah there we go weight and size is a is a huge difference when it comes to talking about these different different lenses for the gh5 what, what are you guys thoughts on some of that yeah um I think like for me, I actually, um, I like having a little bit of a heavier camera, um, which sounds like so like, oh man, you want, you know, run a gun, you think lightweight. Um, but because for, for me, for handheld and stuff like that, the heavier, um, the camera is now, obviously I don't want to be rocking a hundred, hundred pound <laughs> camera, you know, not saying I can't. <laughs> oh man. Funny, but, um, Show those but guns. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I like having a little bit of heavier lenses on my camera. That's just me personally. So sure. Okay. So yep. I kind of have a, a different stance on that. I have, oh, I, yeah. go, I go lighter typically. So mm. I kind of have to choose a few things, right? I have a different, a handful of lenses. Let's say God, there's so many things like run and gun style stuff. I'll go for the, yep. the Lumix, you know, 1235, right? Yep. And this is like a 2470 equivalent. Okay. Yep. Yep. You're getting great, f2.8, you're getting super light, you're getting that autofocus, but if I go this route, I'm getting the 3585. Yep. And I'm getting an f2.0 after it's adapted. Yep. yep. So, I'm getting more this is like this is like my zoom lens that I can use in lower light situations. Yep. But I can't use it all day because you know, mm. Bobby can probably hold a bigger camera than I can. I'm not <laughs> I'm not quite like big guns. <laughs> so it's funny. Like I love this lens and I find it being on like my A cam setup for corporate shoots just because it's kind yeah. of tripoded. And it's a beautiful mm -hmm. lens that's really versatile. And I love it using it with a like a teleprompter or something like that because you don't want to be tearing mm -hmm. that setup oh, yeah. apart all the time. 
Yeah. Yep. So this is a really beautiful lens for that. But when it comes to actual run and gun type work with it, one of the only times I've ever used this thing and really enjoyed it is for wedding ceremonies where I need something that's fast but versatile. And it's like I can deal with it for that 30 minutes or whatever. But after that, I don't think I could lug this around all day. Yeah. So the real question is, do you even lift, bro? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I ride bikes. I don't lift oh, bikes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you can't go wrong with that, right? Yeah. One of, one of the things I want to talk about too is, so I have the Tamron version of that 24 to 70. And one of the Splash issues that I ran into with that is the image stabilization. So mm. on that Tamron, they have a vibration compensation is basically their stability on their lenses. And then, you know, with the GH5, the stabilization built into the camera, the IBIS is you know, fantastic. Mm -hmm. yep. But what I found was I, I was getting s like some weird movement in the image, especially if I was shooting at like 120, uh, like 120 frames per second. You'd see um, it. Yeah, it was like, it's just, just some like weird, it was weird movement. So I actually had to turn that vibration compensation off and just use the IBIS in the GH5. So I just thought that was kind of, that was kind of, an interesting thing that I had going on. Yeah. Have you guys run into anything like that? I don't have anything like that, but it makes sense. I mean, it's two separate types of systems working. You know, you look at a, a Lumix lens and here's another one, 35, 100, right? Yep. It's insane how this can be like a 70, 200 lens and you can handhold it, but and you're benefiting, so you're benefiting because it has the stabilization built in on it and it's right. pairing with it. But like, Lumix system in the lens and on the body working together. But it, it makes sense why that wouldn't work from a Tamron lens to yours. So fortunately, the GH5 is still really good, even if you don't have stabilization on tight lenses. Yeah. So it's, it's not the end of the world if you have to turn one off, but your GH5 is definitely going to be stronger than the lens, I imagine, for stabilization, right? Right. Absolutely. Bobby, do you have any do you have any thoughts on that? I know you use a, a few um Sigma lenses. Or a couple Sigma lenses. Yeah. Like what, how, how have you found the Sigma lenses work in? Especially yeah. that 70 to 50, 17 to 50. 17 to 50. So yeah, I just got that one. Um, and I actually got that one from a Canon M50. Um, so I haven't really used, uh, um, I haven't really used it on my, my Panasonic yet. And so, okay. um, but like the Sigma 18 to 35 is like like here's here's my thought philosophy on on lenses and like I'm very specific in the lenses that I've picked for for my camera and I actually just did a um a video on my YouTube channel of the top 3 lenses that I would pick for my GH5 um and they're all sigma lenses and here's the reason why like I we talk about run and gun right yep. and all of us I mean like I was looking down the list and Nate you have so many lenses you know and like for me I rather I rather rock with like three three lenses which is like you got your wide sure. you got your medium and then you got your close and so um, for me, like the 18 to 35 is a 1.8. You, you adapt that to a speed booster. Well, it turns out to be on some, it's a 1.2 on others. It's a 1.3. And then I don't have to worry about prime lenses. I just, mm. I take the 18 to 35, deal with that one. And then, um, they also offer the 50 to 100, which is a 1.8 as well. And just rock those lenses and then have, a uh, uh, I think it's a, they have a 14 to 24. Yeah, 14 to 24, um, 2.8, which ends up being a 2.0. And so I'm getting pretty close to prime lenses status. Um, and so that's my philosophy. Um, I do have a Canon um, lens, a 24 to it's the F4, and it has the, the IS on it or the, the stabilization. But the weird thing is when I adapt it, I can't use my GH5 stabilization. I have to use the lens stabilization and that might mean that might just mean that I have to um um update the the firmware on on the right speed on. booster so but yeah yeah interesting i think this might be a good time to bring up like using different lenses in different situations you know what i mean like yeah. um 
I'm going to have the list of lenses down in the description that you guys can check out that, you know, Bobby and Nate are using. And I'll put my lens lineup down there too. It's not as impressive, but it'll be down there. <laughs> but, you know, certain lenses kind of lend itself to certain situations as well. Now, um, I noticed... Uh, Nate, you have like a Mitocon 25 millimeter, yeah. but you also have like a Lumix Leica 25 millimeter. Yeah. So mm-hmm. what what's kind of the reason behind, you know, having those two almost the same focal length, but, you know, different lenses? Yeah, I actually, I actually recorded thoughts when I got that Leica lens. I had the Mitocon first and... I almost kind of made my own little video just for my own thoughts to figure out, well, why yeah. would you use each one? And if you're comparing those two lenses, one, the, let me pull it out. This is how small it is. This is the Mitocon 25 so mil. The uh, filter thread on this is a 43 mil, <laughs> uh, which mm. is really, really tiny. And uh, Do you even lift, bro? No, you don't have to with this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is an amazing little lens though because you can oh, yeah. you can pull this thing up to 0.95 and man mm. it still looks really really good uh really versatile lens but so i would say if we're comparing aperture between those two lenses um i would say on the mitocon you can run this thing wide open and you'd be happy with the sharpness of it yep. i would mm. say on the leica 1.4 you would probably be probably be more happy with like 1.8 so already we have a pretty big difference we have yeah al- almost you know like that's like double right or i don't i don't know yep. what the math is on that but yeah so that's significant one you have a, like a faster lens when you go with the mitocon also you don't have any autofocus ability so do you need the one hit autofocus right now that's on my camera that's what mm-hmm. i'm using and i'm using it because of that purpose Otherwise, for feel, they don't have stabilization. Neither of them do. Obviously, right. the, the cinema little lens doesn't have it, but the Leica doesn't either. Uh, otherwise, when it comes to the feel of it, the Mitocon is declicked. It's The aperture is declicked okay. on it. feels good. I like a lot of lenses like that, actually. Um, I'd say the focus ring feels different, for sure. It's a longer throw on the Leica. Whereas on the Mitocon, it's like a little bit shorter, but it's really, really like dampened and fluid feeling. So I would say focus pulls on the Mitocon. If you're really doing like cinematic type stuff, I think the Mitocon is a brilliant lens and you can do, Mm -hmm. it's kind of a low light monster too, right? Like this could be, this could be just the little lens you keep in your bag and it's your B-roll monster. You can shoot B-roll with it. You can get yourself in low light situations. It is so small that it would just fit in a tiny little pouch in your bag and it could save you if you're ever starving for light or if you just want to have mm. like sexy B-roll and you just pull it out because yep. like 90% of my, the B-roll I shoot is on a 50 mil look, a 25 mil on an MFT. So yeah. I think there, uh, there are reasons for both. I think the 25 mil by Leica is more utilitarian. I think if you're a GH5 shooter who's doing photo type work, you might want to lean toward okay. that just to have that autofocus. I don't think many of us are doing that. So yeah. if if you're a video guy, I think it's a killer lens to have. 350 bucks, but it's probably one of my favorite lenses to put on a GH5. It's hmm. it's crazy how good it looks. Yeah. I feel like you just sold me on that lens, bro. Yeah, it's worth, right. It's worth yeah. owning just because rocking an MFT lens at 0.95 that's that small. I mean, it's just you can have so, it on there all the time absolutely yeah. and you can pack mm-hmm. that to go somewhere and just like walk downtown and not have a huge heavy lens on your back or yeah you know like if it's in your backpack or wherever it's just tiny yeah that's awesome guys unfortunately we're out of time Dang i it. think <laughs> i know right i feel like we could keep going with this conversation yeah but maybe what we can do is do a part two how do you feel about that maybe we can uh, do a a part two and talk a little bit more about these lenses because there's so much that we did not hit on this video. So if you're, if you're watching, watch for that part two, that might be coming soon. So guys, I appreciate it. It was good to have you on. Sorry. The resolution here is not, not, you know, the best, but um, (laughs) I thought it was a good conversation talking about the GH5 lenses. So yeah, Yeah. thanks. Thanks for having me. How about in one 
one sentence, a final thought from you about GH5 lenses for video. One sentence. Wow. Um, I'm going to choose <laughs> Bobby. You go first. Uh, one sentence. Oh, wow. It could be anything, anything like, about like a statement GH5 for people? lenses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, a Nate, good way you to go, put it. Man. <laughs> Um, it might be more than one sentence here, but I would say when you're thinking about lenses, you have a lot of options. And I think you really need to think about your use cases and where you're going to use these. How wide open does it need to be? Make sure that mm -hmm. it's a lens like the Mitocon that's actually usable at that. Like their 85 equivalent lens that I have doesn't really get sharp until 2.0. So yeah, just think about like what you need for these different situations. If you need autofocus, if you don't, if you're looking for something lightweight, if you're looking for something like Bobby, and if you don't mind like having a heavier camera, yep. really there's some beautiful looking zoom lenses out there now. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so there really, there really are. Yeah, if you if you don't mind the weight and you're okay with zoom lenses, like there's some serious options. You can get all your range done there. Uh, as for me, I kind of I kind of like having a mix of everything and I can just pick for whatever the job is. But yeah, you just kind of have to think about what the job is and and just get a few lenses and and don't feel like you're being held back if you don't have a lens that you want. Yeah, that, and that time that time can come eventually. Yeah. Bobby, how about you? Yeah. Closing um, thought. Yeah. Uh lenses, um, I mean your camera is your tool, it's what's in your toolboxes. The lenses are a different type of tool. So research the crap out of them and figure out how you're going to use it. So. Love it. I try to keep it down to one sentence. Instead <laughs> yeah, of have sorry. a, instead totally have a run on sentence like Nate. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> no, you good, hey, man. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. All right, guys. Thanks so much for being on. Um, maybe we'll do a part two. I, w I hope that yes. we can because there is a lot Let's that we can get happen. into with these lenses. So, all right, guys, signing off. Good having you. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Again, make sure you check out Nate and Bobby down in the description. And don't forget to comment about what lenses you prefer for the GH5. Let's get that conversation started down below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell so that you don't miss future videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.